Welcome to a new ZBrush tutorial. Today we will see how to work with fiber mesh and how to create and apply some hair and a beard to a character. So, let's get started. The first thing we will do is adjust the size of the brush and use the mask tool to cover the entire area in which we will create the hair. In my case, I would like to have a uniform beard. So, in some parts, I will use soft strokes, but in other parts, I will press harder to create a more solid mask. This will help to have more smoothness near the edges. To create a mask we simply press the control button. Once you do this, you will see how your brush changes from the standard brush to a masking brush. In this case, we will simply use it to delimit the area in which we will create hair. Remember that if you hold down control and alt, you are going to be able to unmask. And if you click control again, you will be able to mask again. Once you're done, if you want to soften the edges of the entire mask, you can press Ctrl and tap over the mask. It is very simple to use. Okay, once we finish our mask, we will go to the fiber mesh menu. Here we will press Preview. Then click OK. Perfect. As you can see, the hair is now applied over the mask. But let's see what else ZBrush can do. Let's go into the Fibers Lightbox menu. Here we can find all the available options, and believe me, each one can be modified. Let's select one to see how it looks. Okay, yeah, that's a great beard, but not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's look some other options. This one looks interesting too, but nope, not for a beard. Let's try this one. Remember that if you want to see how fiber mesh works, you should always do a render. Okay, let's test this one to see how he looks with a green beard. It looks nice, but still, it's not what I'm looking for. The idea is to test which one fits our character, and once we have that, we can start making other adjustments. Okay, once we select the one we want, we can go to the modifiers menu. It is here where the magic happens. For example, we can add more hair with max fibers. We can control graphs to work the length or thickness or the amount of hair. We can even control the gravity of the hair. Let's start with this to see what it looks like. Perfect, that looks way better. Let's see how it looks if we do a render. Perfect. As we can see, the mask we drew earlier is still visible. So, to hide it, let's go to the masking menu. Here, we'll turn off the button, View Mask. This doesn't remove the mask, it only hides it, and that's great because allows us to work on the beard without having that dark color in the background. By increasing the max fibers, we can increase the amount of hair. We can also control the length of the hair. Perfect. You can try each option to achieve different types of beards and hair. This can also be applied to animals to achieve incredible results. In my case, I am going to adjust the gravity a little bit, since I want a more lifted beard. Let's see how it looks after rendering. Perfect. Step by step we are getting closer to what we are looking for. Let's increase the coverage option and let's see how it looks. Always remember to make a render to see the changes. Okay. Now, let's see how we can adjust the colors. As we can see, in this case, the beard is composed of two tones. Using the colors, you can try different options to achieve different combinations. If you want to be more specific in certain details, you can always use the graphics and generate curvatures to adjust some details. This will help you create beards with different lengths, thicknesses, and more. The twist option generates small waves in every hair. It is a great tool if you want to achieve different types of textures. Let's try another render. Great! Once you are satisfied with all the changes, click Accept. Automatically, the beard will become a subtool, like any other object on your character. From here, we can select only the beard and see how it looks. But this is not all, there is something else we can do with fiber mesh. If we go to the brush options and press the G key, we will see a list of brushes that will allow us to continue modifying and adjusting our beard. We can adjust the length, the shape, brush it and more.
Okay, let's see what else we can do. If we go to the subtool menu to hide our beard, we can do something very interesting. If we go back to the masking menu and press the view mask button again, we will be able to see that our mask is still there. This will allow us to make another beard and save it as another subtool. So, if we go back to the fiber mesh menu and press preview, we will see the last beard we created. This is very useful if we want to fix errors. Okay, so, the process here is the same. But in this case, I'm going to change the color, so we can have two different beards. After you finish your changes, remember to press accept. Going back to our subtool menu, we will now see that we have both beards in two different subtools. Let's see how the render looks like. Okay, as we can see I forgot to hide the mask. But I'm not going to use it anymore, so, to deselect it we will simply press Ctrl and drag out of our character. Let's try something different. For example, imagine you want to add some hair in his head. The process is always the same. First, we press Ctrl to draw the mask. Then we go to Fiber Mesh and press Preview. As we know, the last setting we worked on will be applied. But let's do something different, let's choose another type of fiber mesh. I bet this one will look interesting. As we can see under the color tool, in this case, this fiber mesh has a texture applied to it. If we click on the texture, we will have some options to choose from. We can even create our own textures and import them. Have some fun testing each fiber mesh. There are thousands of possible combinations to create all types of hair. Following these steps, you will be able to create hair for animals, people, monsters, or whatever you imagine. So, if we turn off the texture option, we can work again with the colors as we did before. Okay, let's adjust the length and gravity. Let's see how it looks after a render. Perfect. Remember, once you finish making all the adjustments, press accept. This will transform the fiber mesh into a subtool, and once that's done, you'll be able to continue adjusting details with the brushes. For example, since the hair is now a subtool, we can give it a totally different look. Doing this, you will be able to create all kinds of hairstyles for your characters. In my case I just wanted to give Thanos a very short beard to create something very particular. But soon, in another video, I will explain how to paint, and how to create realistic artworks using the ZBrush rendering, and how to compose it. Now it's time to practice. And if you like this tutorial, please subscribe for more videos about ZBrush, Moho, and more. Don't forget to activate the bell, so you can help me with the YouTube algorithm, and comment if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.